Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. I am Dan Scott, voice of the Paladins, and we are going to talk some volleyball this week with uh, Michelle Young, who 24 seasons yeah. as the head coach here at Furman. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, it's nice to be able to be somewhere that long, I guess. It, it is. <laughs> it goes by fast. Yeah, I, it, it's like raising children. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> yes. It, or, or, or really, I guess, any stage of life. You look, <laughs> you look back and where, where, did, where did time go? How are you? How, how are things in the young household? Uh, we are good. Um, we had two wins. Uh, this Everybody won. We went 3-0 and oh this weekend, so it was a good, good weekend in the house. Well, that, <laughs> Well, of course, we're also talking foot, high school football, right? Yeah. So we've got to throw that in there. Th- this has been a, um, a a really, well, in some ways, I don't want to use the word historic, but it, it's been a great start for your team. Best start since 2012, as a matter of fact, when you got off to 11-2. and two, You're 12-3 and three overall, 3-1 three and one in the SOCON now, and, and it's a really a stark difference from what the last two regular seasons have looked like. What's What's been the difference in your estimation? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like, um, and we've talked about it before, even just building off and getting a little momentum from the end of last season. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of new players, so they don't really know any different, which is always nice yeah. uh, when you have a, a young team. Uh, I think they're just kind of, it hasn't been easy. I mean, we like to drag things out or go behind or fall, or fall behind early. Uh, but I do think that's a team that can play loose and has fun with it. And um, they're just kind of finding their way uh, as we go. <laughs> As frustrating as that can be sometimes, uh, it is a group that is, it, they don't panic, which is great. And um, they, like I said, I guess there's something to be said about knowing, not knowing any different. And they're like, they're just trying out there, win one at a time. So, but what does it do for uh, the, the coach when you fall behind <laughs> 2 nothing to Sanford? Uh, and, and then you come back and win 3-2, yeah. but, you know, why can't we win 3 nothing or, or 3-1, right? I feel like that we've played multiple five-match sets, um, but we have uh, done the reverse sweep, I think, three times now. So now we're just like, this is just how it's going to be. You know, nothing's going to be easy. Um, even the match we started the season with, I think it went five sets, and every set was a two-pointer. Uh, and so I guess we just set the tone early with our first match um, of the season, and we just kind of continue to roll that way. I think the nice thing is um, it is good experience for the girls to not panic and do some things, but as a staff, we're like, we could start a little better. <laughs> the, the one constant, no matter what sport you're talking about, though, is the only way to learn – to win close games is to be in close games. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, situations that we've had um, out there on the court that you really, it's very challenging challenging to create in practice. So, I mean, we're trying to be thankful for that, uh, but we'd also like the girls to realize you're actually sweeping people. You're just backing yourself in a corner before you do it. And how can we get better at being more consistent coming out early. I don't think we have, I don't remember last time we've started a match in a lineup or even an offense and finished it in the same lineup or offense, which speaks a lot for some depth that we have this year, which is a difference. And then also the girls being, you know, that those kids, those athletes coming off the bench and helping every time is always great. So, so (laughs) as a coach, do you try to create a mindset then to, to go into it thinking you're already down? (laughs) <laughs> oh, two, and and the reason yeah. I bring it up is, is because I, I'm I'm just thinking back to, to I believe it's Jim Bouton's classic book, Ball Four, where he he talked about there was a particular pitcher on on the the staff that of the team he was on that said that he pitched better when he was frightened. Oh, so right before he threw the first pitch of one game, the third baseman walked over and whispered in his ear, "If you don't win this game, you'll never see your wife and kids again." <laughs> so you know, try yeah. to set that mindset. So yeah. do, do do you try that kind of reverse psychology? Maybe not to that extreme, but yeah, to, right. Uh, we haven't yet. Uh, <laughs> we are actually really trying to uh, get more confident coming out. You know, and trying to be up in a situation instead of constantly fighting back. We're like, you know, it takes a lot of energy to do that. Yes. You'd think we'd learn that last year or the last two years, having to be in a play in game and try to make our way in the tournament. It it doesn't have to be that exhausting. <laughs> What what does it say about the program though? But even before we we hyper focus on this year, what you've done in the last two postseasons because regular seasons have not been what the standard for this program has been, and yet both times you made 
incredible runs and challenge for a conference championship once you got to the tournament. What does it say about just the mindset and the standard of, of the program that you've established here? Well, I just think it's that the girls, they do trust each other. They do trust the, the, the staff, the program. Um, they're really, they're not going to give up on anything and they're, they don't panic. Uh, and I just think it's, it says a lot about the girls character where they're not just like, Oh, this has been a, we don't, we don't like how it's going. We're just going to quit. Um, I just think it all goes back to their character and their ability to kind of dig their heels in and work hard and stick with it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I think we've we've talked a lot to the, about the girls of like we've got to be able to put ourselves in a better situation with the regular season because we can. Uh, we don't have to go in there and be stressed out about the being in a playing game or trying to upset. That's really no way to go about winning a <laughs> winning a championship. Uh, but as far as what it says about the program, I don't know. I just think we you know have a group of people, both staff, players, support staff that. Um, you know, are comfortable putting up a fight uh, if when we have to, and have really trying to put the work in, even if it's not an ideal situation. You know, and I like that they respond to challenges that way. So, who are some of the players that that you've been relying on who have made the difference in, in this twelve and three start so far? So many. Um, like I said, we've had to. Oh, make, we've got all kinds of time, so go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't even know where I start. Like we were kind of talking about just even in the box score how we're playing, you know, 10, 11 kids, 12 kids are, are coming in and making an impact. Uh, we're changing offenses, going from we've started in a 5-1 and switched to a 6-2, and, and that's what's kind of come in and sealed the deal. And then we've started in a 6-2 and had to switch into a 5-1, um, and that's kind of sealed the deal. So we've been able to win in, in multiple offenses. We've been able to win with a number of kids out on the court. I do think that we have a, a nice core of players at each position, which helps. And then that also helps us have better practices. Um, I think some of the freshmen that have come in and been consistent, like Kennedy Siegford has come in and gotten better every day mm -hmm. um, at the libero position. And she's been a constant. She, I think she's the, <laughs> she might be the only player that's started or played in every set this year. Um, there's probably a couple more, but um uh, our three consistent pins have been Mary Beth Headley, uh, Ava Augustin, and Lauren Haynes. Uh, and those three have done a really nice job for us at the pin, but we're not, you know, all three of them have played significantly. I think at one point all three of them were in the top ten in the um, kills a set for the SOCON, which says a lot. You know, mm -hmm. that means they're coming in and contributing. Uh, middles consistently have been Grania McGrath, who's a sophomore, and then Izzy Castello, who's a, a freshman. So two young middles. Uh, and the, they've really held down the fort in the middle, but our third middle, Genevieve Perry, has done a much better job in, in practice these past few weeks. So, so she's someone who can come in and help. And then on the right, we have another freshman uh, in Lindsey Walsh who uh, has brought a heavy arm and brought some more offense there. But it's nice because we have a returner in Sydney Tanner that has been a great adjustment, and she's come in and been so consistent for us to help depending on what offense we're in. And so I think we're finding – the consistency is that we're finding some depth at these positions. Kids are starting to embrace their roles a little bit more and understand how to help and continue to push in practice. Um, we've had some – Young players come in with some ball control when we've needed to. Um, our setters, all three of them, have been contributing. Ella Abraham has probably been the, the the most constant one out there, and she's switching in and out of offenses and do, doing some really nice things for us. And then even a senior, Kaylee Braswell, who comes in as a serving specialist, has been such a spark. So, you know, rattling off all these names mm -hmm. – because everyone has found a way to contribute and help. And then even the players that I'm not mentioning, we've just had such a great group of team players that, that come in and help the cause and um, help us get better in practice, which is huge. Visiting uh, with Michelle Young, talking Furman Volleyball on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Another name that I kept hearing before the season started that was going to have a major impact on this program was Chad Callahan. <laughs> yes. Uh, who is a uh, former coach, at, head coach at Wyoming, Radford, App State, Georgia Southern, has come in as, as uh, your, your top assistant. Now, what has Chad meant to this program? Because, you know, you know I'm not a volleyball guy. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, I know the ball goes up, somebody hits it. If it <laughs> lands over there, that's a point. That's, yeah. that, that's kind of like my soccer knowledge. Yeah. But 
I kept hearing what an impact this guy was going to make before the season ever started. Tell me about Chad Callahan. <laughs> well, here, fun fact, I don't even have more wins than my assistant coach. So everybody's talking about my 400. Which now, happened on September 23rd, by the way. <laughs> uh, and Chad, had, I think Chad's at 406 or something. So I was like, I don't even have more wins than my assistant coach. Um, uh, Chad is, I mean, it's been great. Um, he's First of all, he's a great human uh, and such a great, he is such a, a a great role model for the players. Uh, his wife Jessica uh, came. They came, moved, wanted to get out of the out of the winter. Honestly, uh, so our our location really helped us in getting him come down here. Uh, but they are down here living their best life in the in the not Laramie, Wyoming uh, <laughs> winters. Uh, but he has been. Fantastic. His knowledge of the game. Um, he, we kind of have different personalities is how we see the game. And so the, you know, putting those together has been great for the girls. He's giving them tons of information uh, and they're working to process it. Uh, and I think that he has, it's just been invaluable. I mean, you can't put a value on it because of how much he's helped me uh, run this program and what he will continue to do. Um, it's been, it's been fantastic. On one hand, it, it's got to be great and a comfort for you to have somebody as an assistant you can lean on who has that kind of experience, who has that many wins yeah. at the coaching level. On the other hand, there could be a potential for a guy coming in who's got that many wins and there being some conflict because he's not accustomed to being an oh, assistant yeah. coach. Oh, and, and, yeah. and, and yet that doesn't seem to, to be the issue here. No, I think that we just are both trying, you know, we're just, we don't really keep track of all the number, you know, like wins, losses, you know, egos are kind of put aside. We're just trying to, you know, have a better season, yeah. you know, that's all we're trying to do is help the girls uh, find a way to be more successful. Um, you know, uh, we work together very well. We get along great. Um, it's just kind of egos aside and how do we enjoy what we're doing uh, how do we surround ourselves with great people uh, and try and help these girls find some more success? And that's very clear. Like he has been fantastic. The girls uh, have really en enjoyed having him in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly Picardi, who's another assistant, she loves having uh, having him in there. And the three of us all work together really well because it's it's really not about us. Right. It's about helping these girls out. And that could be, you know, I think – probably the most unnerving is just you're like, oh, this, you know, when you're making a decision, it's sometimes it's like, hey, what would you do? You know, because he has all of that experience. Um, but no, it has been, it's been great. There's probably been, we've tried to figure out our, uh, the three of us, you know, just having a new staff, your demeanor on the bench and who's doing what and all that. But it's just, there's so much trust there and nobody really is looking for credit. We're just trying to get the job done. And at the end of the day, with, with all of the, other nonsense we see in college athletics uh, at the upper levels. At the end of the day, doing what's best for the student athlete and trying to help them become the best version of themselves, whether it's on the volleyball court, in the classroom, outside the classroom, I mean, that's what this is supposed to be. Yeah. Right? And I do think at a Furman, like, you can stay under the fray a little bit of that where it is still kind of that – you're working with these athletes, trying to help them get better, trying to figure out and grow through uh, their experiences so they're prepared when they when they get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and that's his focus too. Like he's, it's just been fantastic, and it really kind of I think we're both finding it to be a lot of fun. Um, and then you throw Kelly in there, our loose cannon, and it's just a great time. Uh, especially with the team we have, it's been a really fun group this year. And obviously, winning more matches early helps. Winning always helps, um, but it has just been a great experience. Uh, you, you know you've been at a place for a long time. I've not been here as long as you have <laughs> in my 13th season now, but when I first got here, Kelly was a student athlete. Yeah. And she has gone on and, and, and done other things and now come back here yeah. as, we'll as never an get assistant rid of that coach. One. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, <laughs> and, and maybe that's a good thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, visiting with uh, Michelle Young, talking some uh, volleyball. You don't want to let. Saturday's win over Sanford just kind of slipped by as another ho hum. We were down two nothing and came back and won three to two. That was also a rematch of last year's SoCon championship match, yeah. right? Yes, it was. Um, I know Sanford; they lost their two top outsides that were their the top outsides in the conference for their career. So they're adjusting to you know they've got some really good players 
that are back and stepping into new roles. So they'll be they'll be there at the top, you know, the, they're just, you know, figuring some things out as well. And we're trying, everybody's, nothing's going to come easy this year in the SOCON. Um, I think there are some teams playing well, very well right now um, that are going to be hard to beat. Uh, and I think that we're still trying to find our high end. Uh, and so it'll be a, it'll be a challenging year, but yeah, that was a rematch. We also had not beat Samford since 2017. So that was something we were like, you know, we were, we were trying to kind of thinking about when is the last time we beat Samford? It's been close a few, but, uh, so that was nice to get some redemption, but it's kind of weird when half the team doesn't even, they weren't even there. Right. <laughs> so they don't really think about it that way. I, I'm not sure how much thought our girls put into that, honestly. Let's go back to September 23rd, ETSU, your 400th yeah. win. Um, what was that moment like for you? Um, I'm not going to lie. I did not know, uh, that was the number. I really? don't really keep track of it. But nobody told you going in? No, again. Kelly had a whole plan, and mm -hmm. I fell right into their trap uh, ah, in the okay. locker room. <laughs> I did because I don't usually talk to the team after the match. I wait, and because after years of you know blowing a gasket in the locker room or you know kind of reacting, I've really figured out I need to just probably wait G and talk give to your, them. Later. Give yourself your own ten minute cooling yep, off. Yeah, and I need to look at the <laughs> film and I need to see what actually you know take some time. Uh, and so I don't usually talk to them. And then um, I think it was Kelly who recruited Chad to get me to go talk to them. And um, so I was like, all right, fine, I'll go in. Yeah, and I walked right in like an idiot. Um, but <laughs> I really, like I said, I, and I just don't, I'm always looking for the next one. Right. Like, I really want 402 now. I mean, if we're going to keep track of the number, um, it's really like, what are we going to do next? What are we doing? Not what have we done? Uh, and we want the girls to think that way as well. I just... I've always been, as soon as you start, you know, like patting yourself on the back and then that's when things go sideways, uh, I'm always trying to, okay, well, what are we going to do next? Um, but it is obviously better than losing. So yes. it's, um, I'm, you know, it's a great thing. And, and I know not a lot of people are fortunate enough to be around long enough to do those kind of things. So it's very exciting, but it's not something that I got a tally in my office and I'm like <laughs> keeping track of all that stuff. When you get to four oh seven, though, will you at least then we'll give, know. Will you yes. at least give Chad a nod? Yes, yeah. we will. We will know <laughs> then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, you, so you, you talked about the, the the difficulty of the conference. Has there been? I mean, you're three and one, so we could say maybe Furman is that team. But is there somebody who's been kind of head and shoulders the team? Everybody. Mm -hmm is either chasing or is expecting to chase when the conference season began? Well, I will say when we played Wofford, that's the best I've seen Wofford play really? in, in years. Uh, they are really feeling it. They've got uh, a lot of seniors out on the court, and they're playing good volleyball. They are going to be tough to, to slow down. But I think the Citadel is one of – the last time they – I don't know, I haven't checked after this weekend, but last weekend they were one of four teams still undefeated in the country. Uh, and they're still, they have not lost yet. They had a close one with Mercer at home. Uh, they had to win in five. Uh, and they've got a great, um, some great players that play, they play so consistent. Um, it, and they're just been so dominant. I think that's going to be a really challenging team to slow down. Um, and, you know, if they continue to play the, with the confidence they have right now, it's going to be very hard. Uh, but I do think, um, I don't think we're that team yet. I think we have some work to do. we really got to be more consistent. We've got to be able to settle into a lineup that we can do the same thing night after night with minimal <laughs> adjustments, not complete adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I am happy with the, some of the things we're doing. Uh, I'm obviously happy with what we're finding ways to win, which wasn't the case. Uh, it's just can we find our high end? I do not think we're there yet, but obviously we're doing enough to – find our way a little bit. We're not making it easy. Uh, I do think we have another level that we can play at. We're just working to find that. So you, you talked about changing offenses, mm -hmm. uh, and it, maybe this one's working, and if it's not, we'll go to this. Is, is that something new for you? Is that something foreign to what you would have done in the past? I mean, are you, this is how we do things, and we're <laughs> going to be very good at this? Or Well, we ran one offense for the first, you know, 18 years, you know, like we've always been a 5-1 team. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we kind of dabbled in the 6-2 in the last two years because of kind of how our personnel was and we felt like this could help us spread the net and create some opportunities. Um, and then this year it's been kind of a mixed bag. Um, I don't – I want to do whatever's going to get us the win, you know, like what – sometimes you have an idea of – 
hey, I think this is a great setup, but then it doesn't really happen out there or they don't, the chemistry's not there. And so um, we're going to do, I am, I'm a little, I lean a little way to the 5-1, just being a former setter. I don't want to be coming in and out. Um, but at the end of the day, you're trying to get the win. Mm -hmm. And I just, maybe we haven't had this much depth or we haven't had our bench players come in and, and make an immediate impact this consistently. But yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. It's a little, you're sitting there trying to make adjustments all the time. Uh, it is hard to find that consistency sometimes, but the girls have done great with it. Mm -hmm. So I got to give them credit. Uh, it's putting a little more stress on the staff trying to figure it out. Uh, but I love that we do have that depth. I love that it's going to help us in practice. But I do think it will be a little less stressful if we can really find a chemistry of, oh, this works night after night. But your willingness to do it, even though it may not be your comfort zone, I think speaks to, to why you've been successful. And there are a lot of really good coaches who can't overcome that stubbornness in every sport, and they find themselves on television as an analyst. Yeah. Because well, they, can't, they can't get past that stubbornness. Oh, I can be stubborn, though. I really uh, I was real stubborn at Sanford and kind of – at the end of the day, wish I would have done a couple things different in uh, the second set. Well, I didn't but, say you were perfect. <laughs> oh, God. So I am self-proclaimed stubborn for sure. But at the end of the day, I'm very, I don't, we're wanting to win too. Right. That over that can overcome our stubbornness. And so uh, we're just going to keep trying to see what's going to be the most consistent for us. Whatever it takes, right? <laughs> yeah. As we get into wrap-up mode, uh, you're going on the road this weekend. Uh, you're going to Chattanooga on Friday, Mercer on Saturday. What sort of challenge will those two matches? I think provide? for us, you know, it would be helpful. Uh, we talked to the girls a lot about getting out of our own way. Uh, too many times we're giving away too many points when it's unnecessary. And so I think if we can do a little better job with that, of um, making the other team earn their points instead of just giving, giving them so many and or giving them a set and having to start down, um, I think that will help us. I think they're two teams that are very capable. Mercer just went five with an undefeated Citadel team and had a shot. Um, they're both playing well. And like I said, nothing easy in the SOCON this year. So, And being on the road, we're just going to have to make sure we're ready to go. We need a good week of practice. And then return to Alley Gym on Friday the 13th ah, yes. against what, as of right now anyway, still an undefeated Citadel team. Yeah. Oldest rivalry in the Southern Conference. <laughs> yeah. So, so that'll be interesting yeah. for sure. Yeah, you know, it, it, from a football standpoint, for a lot of the old timers, that's still the only rivalry. <laughs> right. For Furman Citadel. I, I would imagine that's probably not the case for volleyball simply because of, of the Citadel's history being an all male school for yeah. so long. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's still new. And they're, I mean, they've come a long way from when they um, added volleyball, mm -hmm. uh, a long way. Uh, and so I got to give Dave and his crew credit for putting together a great season. They're going to be tough to beat. What else do people need to know about this team before we wrap it up? I mean, because it's been such a such a great start to this season. Uh, I think know, as a want, whole, want to keep the momentum going. Yeah, we do. I think just as a whole, it's been such a they they support each other so well. Um, they're again, I can't say it enough. They're just great people and really respond to any challenge that we give them. We um, they continue to just work and we, we keep trying to push them to again, find that high end. And I think they're, they're behind it a hundred percent trying to do it themselves and everyone has helped us. You know, I know a lot of times you're not getting to shout out to the whole team, but I just think that all of our girls are trying to find a way to contribute in any way. And I think that that speaks a lot to the girls because a lot of times these days, you know, it's all about, um, them or me or whatever. And I just think this has been from the staff to the, all the players to our manager to our ATC, our str strength staff, everybody. Um, it's just such a group that is really like, hey, how can we help? What can we do to get better? And, you know, that makes it a great work environment for sure. All right. So, again, on the road uh, Friday and Saturday at Chat, at Mercer, and then back home at Alley Gym on Friday the 13th against the Citadel. Yep. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. Good <laughs> stuff. Anything else we need to cover? No. No. Good luck to uh, good luck to all the other sports out of Furman. Everybody seems to be doing a great job. Love it. Yeah, we've got speaking of the Citadel. Mm -hmm. They'll be right down there on yep. that field uh, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, but more about that coming up <laughs> later on. That has uh, or that is uh, Michelle Young, and we have wrapped up another edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. And that will be the monthly Ask the AD. 
with Jason Donnelly and a special guest that we'll tell you about a little bit later on. Until then, for Michelle, I'm Dan saying God bless you and so long, everybody. Mm-hmm.